Hello everyone. My name is Samir Sadana. Today we have with us Pawan Kumar Vati, who have scored 99.8 percentile in CAT 2022 and have secured uh, uh, the admission in IIM Ahmedabad. Many many congratulations, Pawan. Thank you very much, sir. I uh, I really love to know this that you finally converted IIM Ahmedabad. You know, uh, 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 I just want to know your complete you know preparation strategy. I'm sure students uh, would like to know how did you prepare. Uh, for CAT 2022, how was your preparation journey and how did you secure admission in one of the top B school? I am Ahmedabad, that's ranked one college. Tell tell me uh, about your preparation journey, Pawan. Uh, so basically, I have decided to give CAT in December 2021. Like I have discussed with my parents about my high study plans and finally convinced them that I'll go for an MBA and I'll write CAT. So after that, I started around the preparation March and April, like... Since I'm a working employee, like I'll be hardly getting one or two hours a day. So I thought I'd be start early so I can get, uh, I can give more time for the preparation, something like this. So okay. uh, then I searched for a lot of sources, like where to study and all. But, I mean, I cannot go to the regular classes and all. So I have to rely on the internet. I mean, the online sources only. Then one of my seniors suggested your name for the quant preparation. Then I started watching your classes on an academy. And I really liked the approach that you do for the problems and also i started watching your quant so for the first two three two to three months i mostly focused on quantitative aptitude and dlr sometimes like solving one or two sets in, in once in a day or twice in a day something like this and okay. later in the month of july and all i started focusing on vrc okay so this was your first attempt Paman, right yeah, it, it is my first attempt. like once i have applied it in once 2020 but i couldn't write it because of the covid scenario Okay, I just want, you know, uh, ki aap ek bar apna complete profile, uh, you know, bacho ko bata do. Uh, what was your, what is, uh, uh, aapke graduation mein kya subjects the, what is your complete profile? Did you had any work experience? And, and also I would like you to mention your specific percentile in individual section that you secured in CAT 2022. Okay, so starting from my 10th, I have studied in Andhra Pradesh, uh, my 10th okay. and 12th. Like in 10th, I have 9.7 CGPA and that in 12th, I have 97.5 percentage, both in Andhra Pradesh, both. Later, I got an admission in NIT Nagpur in mechanical engineering. So okay. I completed my mechanical engineering in 2021 in NIT Nagpur with a 7.5 CGPA. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, from the last 22 months, I have been working in Bangalore in Bosch in the okay. sourcing and procurement domain. So it's like more of a management uh, kind of profile. Okay. Uh, so... And coming to my CAT percentile, it is 99.80 overall. And if you go to section wise, VARC is the 98.95. Uh, DLR is 95.19 and quantitative is 99.87. That's great. Uh, so you had the highest percentile in quant section that you studied yeah. for me. So I would like to start with quant first because that's one section that you prepared for me. Uh, 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 tell me about your preparation journey for quant. I mean, how did you start it? With your cat, uh, uh, with with the quant section, assuming that uh, uh, knowing that you uh, have done mechanical engineering, I'm sure you must be having upper hand in understanding the quantitative aptitude already. But what suggestion you would like to make to the students who are not from the engineering background? Does having the engineering background make a difference when it comes to the cat exam? Where did you stand when you started your cat exam preparation, and how did you prepare for the quant section overall? So coming from engineering background, I'm comfortable with mathematics, but I honestly don't feel like it is an added advantage for CAT preparation because the mathematics that we use in CAT, pre CAT preparation or like in CAT exam are very basic, like up to 10th class mathematics mostly, even the geometry and all also basic theorems and everything would be there. So anyone which are, with a logical approach is, is easy for them to do that. But since I have, I am from engineering background, like I am more confident in doing that like my approach is more con in the more content way that's one thing and before that also since i have prepared for the com placements and all i am comfortable with quant like i know what all the topics are there in that that's the thing but the one thing i noticed in myself was uh, i do a lot of silly mistakes like calculation mistakes and everything so that mm -hmm. i wanted to correct it so i had to practice a lot I think I complete. I did the complete syllabus thrice of your like all the playlists thrice uh, okay. during my preparation Right. Uh, to correct that thing. And even though I did that thing, I think I lost one question in the final exam due to calculation okay. mistake. Okay. Uh, that one, that's one thing. And again, I would say 
I didn't take a chance in any of the topic. Like I have learned all the topics completely because we cannot afford to lose an easy question. We can leave in tough question, but we all we cannot afford to lose an easy question. So yeah. I think I complete complete syllabus. That's one thing. Great. Okay. So uh, you prepared all uh, sections or all the individual topics of uh, one section by watching my courses on An Academy, right? Yes, sir. And. Uh, when you were learning uh, those courses right uh, did you ever felt that uh, some basics were supposed to be known by you earlier uh, you know before you started your preparation or was it that you uh, you was able to understand everything in the classes itself uh, no i think i was able to understand everything in the classes itself but honestly okay. the thing is uh, the the way you taught completely changed my approach. Like before that, even though I'm good at averages and all, I used to solve by the general method, like taking the complete sum, dividing it by the number okay. of elements and doing it. Right. But right. once I started uh, watching your classes, like I started doing, following that approach, distributing the values and doing it in a more logical way that, rather than following the uh, formulaic approach. So that helped me to solve the different kinds of problems in the final exam and all. So, so once, whenever I, I happen to... Uh, solve a new kind of problem right. the logical approach helped me to do solve it in the right way without wasting much time right so obviously a student should start focusing more on basics and logic rather than cramming formulas that's always i recommend to the students in my uh, classes I, i'm sure that approach must have helped you there also uh, and uh, you know specifically to quant section do you uh, did you prepare uh, a more on specific topic like did you put more attention to arithmetic or algebra or did you uh, did uh, did 100% syllabus um i think i've put more efforts in geometry because i was not comfortable with geometry honestly so i think i have practiced the theorems like i have practiced the derivations multiple times so i could know how the been derived the particular theorem or whatever it is that mm -hmm. helped me to solve the problems in much easier way and coming to algebra since i'm from engineering background i'm much more comfortable in algebra so like i did some of the problems in my own way which i'm very much comfortable and mm -hmm. arithmetic again i followed your approach to solve the problems especially in mixtures and solutions okay. all these things okay okay with, and, without using uh, the formula right uh, what suggestion you would like to give to the students who will be appearing for 2020 cat 2023 or 2024 how did how sh they should start their exam preparation should there be any specific topic they should be targeting and or uh, is it that they should be going for 100 percent slavers uh please uh, give your suggestion to the cat 2023 aspirants for quant, I, I would suggest to go for 100% syllabus because you never know which topic can be hard in the exam. So you can, if you know it is a hard question and it, it might take so, so much more time, so you can leave it, but you cannot leave the easiest question. So try to complete, try to complete the complete syllabus and then, uh, and do practice more on your uh, strengths and weaknesses. You should know that. And I just want people to do the complete syllabus. That's it. All right. Uh, and practice also, a lot. Right. Right. Yeah. Practice, practice again. Uh, I mean, of students, right. So one thing I feel is like cat is uh, not an exam of knowledge or something. It is an exam of practice. Right. You're right. You're right. So uh, talking about the DILR section, how did you prepare for DILR section? What was your uh, experience in the final exam when you were preparing for, when you were attempting the DILR? DILR, you had a lesser percentile, I can see. You you had only 95.8%. Yes. Uh, one nine okay so uh how was uh, what what happened there i mean uh, you you how, how how much marks did you get in dilr section 19 19, 19. that's approximately around six to seven questions so you must have corrected seven questions and must have done one or two more questions wrong yeah. what happened in dlr how did you prepare in dlr so i gen i followed your videos and some of the youtube classes like where they give some set i used to keep some timer and do it in 10 to 15 minutes i tried to do it in 10 to 15 minutes i started preparing for dlr in the month of june around so like daily one set or one set in two days something like this and actually dlr was my strength until the, i gave the exam like i used to score at least 30 marks in that section but in the final exam i was not comfortable with the language that they have used in the exam so that's one thing. Again, like uh, DLR, every time they give the new set, so it's always try to do as many as we can. So we'll get comfortable with uh, different kinds of sets and we can approach them in the right way, the final exam. Okay. 
So uh, talking about the syllabus of DLR, what would you recommend students, how students should be doing data interpretation, logical reasoning preparation? Uh, honestly speaking, I do not know the exact difference between the data interpretation and logical reasoning. Like sometimes uh, in some questions, they always jumble them and give the questions. Yeah, now uh, they have started jumbling it, uh, called as a DI logic. Uh, there's a graph given so, also, but mostly the set is not based on calculation, but it's morally, mostly based on logical reasoning concepts. You're right. So, so I mean, it's all about practice. I think some people will be comfortable in deriving from the data. Like some people are very, uh, have good observation and they can get that data right away. So for them, they can focus more on DA and some people are good with logic. They can focus on LR. But again, we cannot guarantee in the final exam because some of my friends say they got all those four sets as uh, DA. They don't have LR in that. Okay. Uh, so that's all they complain. So it's always better to focus on both of them. And what practice as many sets as with uh, your attempt in DLR? I mean, why did you uh, uh, score only uh, 19? Though it's a good score, it, it took you to 95 plus. Uh, but what I'm imagining is if you would have sold two sets completely right, I guess you would have got 100 percentile. Because with 19 marks in DLR section, you are at 99.8, right? So, and and if you would have got 99 plus percentile in DLR section, I guess you would have touched 100 percentile, which was just short of 0.2 percentile, uh, you know, 0 0.2 percentile. If not 90, if not 100, definitely you must be getting 99.9 plus. So, what happened? Uh, what was, uh, you know, uh, what why why did you manage uh, six to seven questions? What happened with your attempt in DLR section? So I think I was not comfortable with the language. That's the first thing. Like before that, when I saw the previous papers also, the question was very clear to me. So I know what I'm doing. But in this case, like uh, only one set I was able to do comfortably. Other the all the three sets, like I was reading them, I was not comfortable again coming back and forth. And finally, I picked this set. Then that also, like I didn't do it very confidently. Uh, I did it from what I understood. That's the thing. So you would say selection of set some is something that really matters in DLR section, right? Yeah, I think uh, we have to, we should be re able to reach a, a level where we see the set and we should be able to judge that whether I can do it or not. I think yeah. reaching that level would be helpful in okay. getting 19 uh, percentile in DLR. Okay, coming to the VRC section, how did you prepare for VRC? Your percentile in VRC is 99 plus, right? And, and 98.95 around 98.95. Okay, that's again a great percentile. How did you manage this percentile in VRC? How did you prepare for VRC? So, when I started preparing for VRC, VRC is my weakest section. Like, I used to score single digits in that, honestly. Okay. So, I tried multiple resources, but I didn't find anything. Uh, I mean, anything that suits my wavelength, basically. So, I tried multiple resources, then like I tried some classes for one week, 10 days, and I didn't like them again, start some new thing. So I started the VRC in the month of around August or September. I started very late. Then I took a course, uh, career lunch, VRC 1000. Okay. So I started following that. Okay. Uh, so I practiced more like, uh, and then I changed my approach. Before that, I had an approach of uh, doing two, two proper assays and then four questions in the uh, VA section. Okay. But then I changed my approach. Like uh, I didn't take time to choose RC. Like I started solving from the beginning of the paper itself. Like I started reading the RC, then going to the question, solving uh, whatever questions I can do and going to the next possible. That's how I approached it. Okay. And, uh, uh... Uh, what would be your recommendation to the students who are from, you know, who, who are very weak in uh, VRC, how they should be preparing for, does reading help? Uh, should they be reg uh, regularly reading something uh, to improve their reading habits and, and what, what, what approach they should follow in our VRC section? Okay. So reading is definitely helps uh, reading definitely helps to improve the vocabulary and everything. And also I, I usually read the A on essays and JST or sometimes like not every day, but like once in two days, something like this to improve my vocabulary. But again, I think uh, VRC is uh, the VRC section actual cat paper is way easier than what we solve in mocks and everything. That's one, mm -hmm. that one thing I always remember. Okay. So, uh, First, we can focus on the accuracy. Then I think solving a more number of questions we ask would help to score more. I feel I feel in that way. Right, right, right. Okay, and uh, 
you know uh, when uh, how was your experience in the interview i mean aapka uh, interview experience kaisa this was about your preparation journey right how did you prepare quant how did you prepare dlr and we also get to know how did you prepare the vrc section now coming to the uh, uh interview how did you prepare for the interview and what was your actual experience in interview so before going for interview like i have spoken to many of my seniors who are in iams you know to know their interview experience and what i could hear is like we cannot know what they're going to ask like it's always better to prepare for the worst possible for the interviews so then i sit and noted down all my strengths and weaknesses and note down my profile and uh, had a road map like what kind of questions they can ask me like since i have no work experience i expected a lot of questions on my work experience the same thing happened in bangalore and kolkata interviews okay uh, also from i revised my graduation subjects also like the important subjects and i have some some subjects in my graduation which are related to my current work profile i also revised them well okay so so the actual interview experiences are pretty chill like the panels are very good like they are uh, very patiently listening to what i say and it's more about articulating yourself well uh, before going to interviews we should know ourselves well so we can uh, support our the arguments that we make uh, in most of the cases there is no right or wrong it's always uh, how you articulate yourself and how we support ourselves that's all okay. and coming to the current affairs section i i used to refer some business news every day like which might relate to my work profile or like graduation thing uh, i i and i formed a small preparation group with one of my senior and we used to discuss every day the news that happened that day so the those discussions also helped me a lot okay and uh, you know I, i generally meet a lot of students who uh, you know th- these students don't have any idea whether they want to go for marketing or finance or operation are they supposed to know this before they started uh, uh, start their mba journey and and if they are supposed to know this what should be uh, you know the activities they should be involving themselves in so that they get have a, they they get a clear idea uh, you know uh, where in which field in, in which stream they should be go, uh, going for uh, their mba uh were you aware about this this specific field that you want to do your mba in uh i work in supply chain domain like it's related to supply chain so i was prepared to answer if they ask me such kind of question i was prepared to answer that i'll be preparing operations roles okay. kind of thing and also i was interested in consulting like i have spoken to some of my seniors as far as they explained i understood the profile a little bit and i was prepared to explain them because uh, why did i like that profile Okay. so it's always better to know that uh, like what do you expect from an mba because uh, they want to see like where you will be fit in the peer group that you are getting exactly right okay so uh, com- when when it comes to the interview preparation what suggestion you would give to the students right how they should be starting uh, with their preparation journey for that interview specifically so people who has work ex it's always better to focus work on the work ex like they should be able to answer the all the probable questions on their work experience and some good revision on the basics of the graduation not too much depth but at least the basics of the graduation should be visible and they're expected us to know the the major uh, happenings in the in the society or like the news whatever it is basis at least in business sector Right. So again, it depends on the panel to panel. Like if you if you ask me Ahmedabad interview, ask about me Ahmedabad interview, one of the panelists asked all about my hobbies, nothing else. Okay. Like she literally asked me what I did after my office hours, and she asked all the questions based on that. Okay. What was your uh, uh, what what hobby did you mention in your interview? So I'm a writer actually. So I mentioned the same thing, and she asked a couple of questions on that, like which authors you like, which films you like, which other scripts you like, something like this kind of. Okay, okay. And your whole interview was based on your hobbies. Uh, there are two panelists, and one of the panelists was asking these questions, uh, like all my hobbies, and another panelist asked about my work experience. Okay, okay. And uh, I also want to know, did you converted your uh, uh, I am B call also? Uh, the results are not at all, sir. I am okay. hoping to convert that. Then, and... okay, okay. As of now, you have converted. I am Ahmedabad, right? Yes, and as okay. also converted S P J M R. Okay, okay, okay. Many, many congratulations, uh, Pawan. I hope uh, we have answered all the queries. Uh, you know that students might 
love to know. Uh, I guess one question that I missed, I would like to cover. Uh, talking about the mock papers, how many mocks did you give? What is the importance of mock in the student uh, in the ex CAT exam preparation journey? I mean, how how and and at what time they should start giving the mocks? Um, I think uh, people can start giving mocks around July, uh, June end or July. I think that's the probable time. And I used to give one mock a week at least. So, okay. and once I give the mark, I used to do the uh, analysis immediately now, not taking too much time because in some like in VRC and DLR, if we take some time and solve it, we might get another approach in my mind. In my mind. So I want to have the same approach that I had at the point of giving the exam and while doing the analysis also. That's one thing. And uh, I almost given 40 mocks, including the previous papers, 40 to 45 mocks. Okay. Uh, That's one thing. Did, did okay. Yeah. Please continue. So I used to score around sixty to seventy marks. Uh, sixty to seventy marks till the beginning mid of the September. After that, I had seen a spike. Like I started scoring above hundred marks. So I believed in. I feel people should trust in the process and give the time. I think the results will show at the at the single moment. Like I I think people can't see that increment of one two marks for every mark that they give. Right. So initially you were getting low marks in mocks and gradually they increases, right? Yeah. Initially 70 marks around. Okay. So uh, do you, do you really think the percentile in mock papers matters? Uh, no, I, I don't think it really matters because the number of people that more <clears throat> those give marks are very, very less compared to the actual number of people. So it doesn't matter. It's like, uh, the only thing that matters is how we approach the paper and what is the standard of the paper. That's all. Right. Right. I guess we answer all the questions that students would like love to know, right, about their exam preparation. Thank you so much, Pawan, for giving the interview. And many, many congratulations for Thank you, sir. Thank you very course. much. And wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. For next Thanks. two years of your MBA. Thank you. Thank you, sir.